Hello and welcome to the program. After a 20-hour session, the Ukrainian Parliament has adopted the state budget for 2019. The plain revenues are 37 billion US dollars and expenses 40 billion dollars. Now GDP growth is expected to reach 3%. To discuss the new budget, we welcome to the studio Maria Repko, Deputy Exec Executive Director at the Center for Economic Strategy. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hi. So, um, for, for this year's budget, what are the major changes since last year? Um, actually, there's not much changes because uh, both budgets last year and this year, uh, they were uh, really um, like almost balanced uh, under the IMF's pressure. The budget deficit is uh, very constrained and even between the first and the second reading, uh, not much changed. And mm -hmm. this is a very positive sign because, uh, you know, the IMF, it uh, wants Ukraine uh, to be uh, responsible even in the elections year. And that's very difficult to achieve because um, when elections are coming, uh, like every mm -hmm. member of parliament wants Tends his big with, barrel yeah. and uh, that's very difficult indeed. So for the Minister of Finance, for like the new Minister of Finance just appointed, it was a very difficult task and we're like glad that she managed uh, to do it without um, pushing the deficit higher or mm -hmm. uh, pushing the expenses um, higher like too, too much because they are indeed higher like at about 2% if uh, you compare a second reading to the first mm -hmm. reading. Uh, but still, uh, more or less, the budget discipline worked and the IMF pressure worked. So we now have a more or less balanced budget. Um, now, how do you, because this, uh, this year's vote has been compared to other years, for example, um, has been quicker, faster. How do you explain that the process mm -hmm. was faster? Mm -hmm. This year, is it because of pressure of the MF, because of the election year, because? Uh, yeah, is there? there is a very simple explanation. Um, that's uh, actually uh, indeed pre-election year, uh, so no one uh, in the cabinets are interested in um, like uh, sort of defaults or some troubles with debt redemption and so on. So mm -hmm. the. Um, Cooperation with the IMF is one of the biggest priorities for the current government, for um, the current members of uh, ruling coalition in the parliament, and uh, it is a very big priority indeed. And uh, as we have a holidays in the US, uh, we had to pass the budget earlier because it's because uh, of the just US. Just because oh, because okay. of the US holidays, so we <laughs> have to like uh, pass the budget mm -hmm. and then bring it to the IMF and say, okay, we uh, made what we promised. Here is your balanced budget. So could you please uh, regard um, the tranche, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, actually probably if everything is okay, uh, this, uh, so it will be coming this year in December, if, if everything is okay. Now, um, apparently you said that this budget also depends a lot from the pressure of the IMF. Can we imagine that, that one day uh, Ukraine will first won't need the IMF uh, and also won't need that kind of pressure to have a balanced budget? Mm -hmm. I mean, if the IMF retires or withdraw or hopefully, uh, hopefully Ukraine doesn't need, doesn't need the uh, help of the IMF, do you think this kind of balanced budget might continue? Mm. I would say it will be um, a very great year and the perfect year because <laughs> we have a very long history of relationship with the IMF mm -hmm. from 90s. Uh, so if uh, one just shiny day Ukraine doesn't need IMF anymore, so I would be very glad. It would mean that uh, we have economic growth, we have macroeconomic stability and uh, uh, we have actually normal economy mm -hmm. approaching to the developed markets. So I would be very glad. Now, um, one of the biggest uh, expenses on, uh, on the budget are, uh, is, of course, the military. How to ensure that the military doesn't, uh, you know, eat too much on others, on, on other mm -hmm. uh, development, um, like, mm -hmm. on, say, infrastructure, road, education, all that kind of things? Mm. Uh, one should understand that if uh, you look at the functional um, breakdown of the budget, the military and internal forces are combined. So, for example, mm -hmm. in this, uh, as far as I remember, so, 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 some 6% or something of GDP, uh, the, the, uh, there are... Um, uh, Mr. Avakov's ministry, uh, it's, uh, I mean, police and uh, the police office and uh, the patrol police. There is a prosecution service, uh, there are um, courts, uh, National Guard and mm -hmm. the military. So the military actually occupies not um, actually, that's not the majority of uh, the expenses. So it's a whole block about authorities. That's a whole. Authority that's, a whole uh, that's a whole for authorities block, and um, that's big actually. Yeah, but not, not, it, looks, not, it looks exactly. It, it looks, looks on the graphics. It looks, big, it looks, it looks bigger. bigger, but it's not because of the military. 
Um, <clears throat> now, uh, Ukraine is waiting. We talk about, talked about the, the IMF uh, from two, two billion from the IMF. When, when, when will it receive this tranche? Uh, we will have. Um, we, we, we can expect the decision in December if uh, actually the budget is passed. So we will have to like pass it to the IMF, and the board will have to gather on Ukrainian issue and make a decision. So uh, we expect something to be clear in December. Okay, because uh, that was exactly that was the vote from Parliament, but it has to, it has still to be still committed to be and approved and, 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 and signed and approved. Yes, so that's a process. Mm. Do you think it's going to be approved by the IMF? Um, hopefully, because uh, it's really, really conservative. What do you mean? I, I, we mean that I, I mean that the, even in the pre-election year, the deficit was uh, that it, it stayed in the framework, mm -hmm. and the expenses and the revenues were not increased dramatically. So they were increased by uh, 17 billion hryvnias, but it was not as dramatic as, for example, last year when mm -hmm. it was increased by 40 billion hryvnias. And uh, uh, you can take into account the elections, actually the pre-election budget. So you can imagine uh, what uh, was the pressure on the Ministry of Finance to to to, to to add some mm -hmm. expenses and revenues, but still, um, it's uh, more or less budget. So I believe that the IMF would be happy. Now, um, it's not <clears throat> well. This, this budget has been voted, and it's um, if the IMF approved the the, the, the budget, the trench will come. Uh, the expected uh, trench will come to Ukraine. It's not only about the budget, but like how uh, the money from, uh, from government goes to institution. How to ensure that this money is well spent and goes uh, in the end, you know, to really renovate the roads and all these mm. infrastructure, infrastructures and mm. things like that. Mm. In the pre-election year, this is a very good question indeed, and uh, we do have some expenses that uh, in the US they call it, as far as I know, pig barrel, and in Ukraine we call it grechka. This mm -hmm. is uh, sort of pre-election expenses that are uh, given to regions, uh, like to open some buildings, like public pools and, and everything for the members of parliament just to PR themselves. Uh, still, these expenses are not too high. So they are high. They um, they are on this budget, but they are not too high, as high mm -hmm. as they might be if there were no IMF. And uh, also, um, what is important and why your question is uh, so good, <laughs> because our <laughs> Ministry of Finance, with the aid of European Union, they are now working on the reform of the public finance management system. So uh, the uh, three-year uh, performance-based budgeting would um, like hopefully be introduced next year. Uh, we already have the um, corresponding laws uh, passed uh, the first reading in Parliament. So uh, we expect next year to be uh, devoted to the preparation to the second reading and actually passing them and uh, preparing this whole um, performance-based budgeting system if uh, it is in place mm. then ukraine can ukrainians and voters they can be sure that these uh, huge amounts of uh, amount of funds is distributed to the proper region at the proper level and so on and so forth. So there is an overview from international donors about this budget and expenses in the uh, end? The European Union is working on um, this uh, public finance management um, reform. Mm -hmm. And I hope that uh, their overview and their aid and their technical support uh, will be sufficient and will help. Now, um, <clears throat> to conclude this, uh, this interview, as the uh, you said earlier, this is election year. So, whatever the outcome for uh, the next election, for the next election, do you think the budget might stay the same? Is, isn't there some sort of temptation to redistribute after just after an election? I mean, to redistribute to certain sectors. How do you see? How do you forecast that kind mm -hmm. of thing? How does it usually happen? Uh, this is definitely a risk. Uh, last year, the budget was reviewed in the middle of the year, mm -hmm. and uh, next year, I don't see any reason why it would not be reviewed if there would be no pressure from the IMF. But, uh, like, as, as far as I can see, uh, educated guess, this pressure will remain in place because we have uh, huge debt redemptions, not only this year, but the year after this, the next year, and the year mm -hmm. after the next year. So Ukraine will have to, like, muddle through several years uh, to redeem these debts, and uh, then this risk would be, would be higher. Now it's not as high as it might be. So paradoxically, uh, yeah. I would say thanks to the debt, uh, there is well, will be a continuity in the, in the balanced budget. Uh, that's right. I hope so. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for come to come uh, in uh, our studio for this overview. It was a pleasure to uh, to welcome you. Uh, that was Maria Lebko, deputy executive director at the Center for Economic Strategy. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for the rest.